We've all talked about the idea that the Idaho Four crimes were committed out of revenge or to possibly send a message. These were very personal crimes. And as personal as these crimes appear, is it possible that they were carried out by a complete stranger? Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today I wanna talk a little bit about a theory. And this is a theory that we've talked about on my channel before. And a lot of other creators have talked about it before me. So it's been around for a little while. But every time that it comes back around, there's a different version. And one of the versions that has caught my attention is by a channel called Jay Embry. And he goes by Pavarotti. His theory is that basically two of the victims were actually the targets inside this King Road house. And they were targeted out of revenge by traffickers due to the actions of their mothers. Well, Maddie's stepmother and Zana's mom. So he makes a lot of really good points and he puts them together really well to confirm what he's talking about. I received an email with a link sending me to his channel because they were asking me, do I think that this type of scenario is possible? And my answer is absolutely. I definitely believe that this type of scenario is possible. If you ask anyone who lives in an area of this country that has a high amount of trafficking, they'll tell you that these types of heinous crimes are not as uncommon as people would think in these high traffic areas. With narcotics comes money and with money, comes organization and power. And just like with any other society or organization, there's rules that are expected to be followed. And these rules are strictly enforced. So if someone within this society or within this organization breaks the rules, then they will be held accountable one way or another. Any person or people who pose a threat to an organization because of the information that they might have could be in danger. Anyone who is going to snitch or go into protective custody because they've shared information with law enforcement is definitely in danger. And not only are their lives in danger, but it also endangers the people around them. So not only are they in danger, but their loved ones are in danger as well. Because preservation is what it's all about in these organizations. If someone is sharing information with law enforcement that might pose a threat to the preservation of this organization and this, you know, these people who are who feel they're being wronged can't get to the person who's sharing this information because either they're in hiding or they're being protected by law enforcement then it's not uncommon for these people to go after someone who's close to this individual. Now, they're going to go after someone close to this individual, not only to get revenge, but to send a message to not only this person, but anyone else who may be thinking about talking about this organization. And they're going to send a message by going after someone who's close to this individual, someone who this informant cares about. And they're going to go about punishing this person that way. 
And usually it does get the message across. The narcotics business is not somewhere that people want to play around in. It's very serious and secrecy is crucial. There's a lot of crimes that happen in this country that a lot of people don't hear about that would make a lot of horror movies look like an after school special. These things do happen. And a lot of times, you know, this is serious. It's very serious. And a lot of times, you know, the average narcotics addict may not understand the severity and the seriousness of their actions when they're dealing with these organizations. Individuals who are addicted to narcotics just want to use. That's their main objective. You know, their main objective is to get these substances and use them. And that's their main objective every single day. Now, some people's addictions are worse than others. But when we're talking about heavy-duty narcotics, these are typically users who use every day. And they almost need these substances because for them to not have them could make them very sick. So a lot of times it's their main objective to get these substances and use them. And when they get hemmed up by law enforcement and taken to jail, they're no longer able to use. So they've been taken off the streets. And a lot of times, as I said, if this is their main objective, they're going to do whatever they have to do to get out of jail and get back on the streets. And a lot of times, you know, your street level addict might not understand the severity of their actions when it comes to these organizations. So it's really unpredictable what an addict might do when they get locked up because their main objective is to get back out on the streets and get back to using. So a lot of times they may decide to cooperate with law enforcement and they may not understand the severity of those consequences. Because as we said, if, if whoever they're informing on can't get to them, then they're just going to move over to one of their loved ones and you know, get to them that way. Because sometimes that's the worst way. Sometimes that's what's going to hurt someone the most. And it's also something that's going to send the strongest message. So a lot of times your, your street level addict is going to do whatever they have to do to get out of jail. But they don't understand the situation that they're creating and the severity of their actions. Addiction is powerful and it gets people into very dangerous situations every single day. Now, another part of this theory is that Brian Koberger and Brent Kopaka, who I'll be referring to as Brent K, were partners and we're working together as enforcers. And that's how Brian Koberger got involved in these Idaho four crimes. Now, do I believe that Brian Koberger was a trained assassin? I don't know about all that, but I believe it's possible. Allegedly, Brian Koberger and Brent K were from the same area of Pennsylvania and both moved to Pullman, Washington around the same time. Now, there's no indication or no information that I'm aware of 
that connects Brian Koberger to Brent K. I mean, we know that they lived close to each other in Pullman, Washington. But there's really no information or evidence that they knew each other in any way. Now, Pullman, Washington is a small town. So it wouldn't be unthinkable that Brian Koberger and Brent K had possibly crossed paths at some point. But it would seem as though if they knew each other, that there would be some sort of connection, some sort of connection somewhere. You know, maybe video of Brent K at Brian Koberger's apartment or maybe Brian Koberger's neighbor seeing Brent K at his apartment. It just seems as though if they knew each other, I mean, they were close enough to commit this type of crime together. It just seems as though there would be some evidence of some sort of connection between the two. And so far, I don't feel like we've seen that. So do I think that it's possible that Brian Koberger and Brent K knew each other? Sure, I, I think that it could be possible. But as of now, I don't feel like there's really enough evidence to connect them together. What do we really know about Brian Koberger? I mean, we've seen a ton of pictures and there's been a ton of news articles, you know, about Brian Koberger. But that's all that we really know. Brian Koberger doesn't appear to have a lot of friends. If you notice when you're watching interviews of people talking about Brian Koberger, they're never described as Brian Koberger's best friend or Brian Koberger's good friend. They're always described as someone who went to elementary school with Brian Koberger or, you know, his neighbor. So it doesn't appear that Brian Koberger really had a lot of friends. And this would allow him to kind of do things that a lot of people may not know about. So it's very possible that Brian Koberger was proficient with weapons. It was, it's very popular that, or very possible that Brian Koberger could have been training with various types of weapons. And people might not have known this because he's described as a loner. We know that Brian Koberger you know, is 29 years old. So he's been around a little bit. You know, he's not old, but he's old enough to have seen some things. So I think it's very possible that he could have definitely familiarized himself with various weapons and that people might not know this about him. Because it doesn't appear that he had people involved in his everyday life. You know, he pretty much is described as a loner. Which, you know, would, would give him the opportunity to do things that a lot of people might not know anything about. As far as Brent K, I do believe that with his military training, that he would have possessed the capability to commit these types of crimes. Now, we know that Brent K suffered from PTSD and also had a mental disorder. And we know that, that we've seen in the past people with these types of disorders commit some heinous crimes. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone who has PTSD or has a mental disorder is violent, of course. You know, it doesn't mean that just because somebody has PTSD or a mental disorder that they would commit this type of crime. But I do believe that with Brent K's training and, you know, possibly his mindset, 
that he would be someone who could possess the capability to commit this type of crime. Now, I haven't really talked too much about Brent K. And there's a reason for that. I've, I've touched on it a little bit. But there's a reason I haven't talked about Brent K. as of yet. And eventually I'll make a video talking about the reasons why I haven't really brought him up in any of my videos. But as far as the capability of an individual to be able to commit these crimes, I do believe that Brent K. would possess the capability to do that. Now, do I think that he was involved? I don't know. You know, that's not something... I haven't really seen a connection from, you know, between Brent K. and these victims. Or, you know, any indication that Brent K. knew anybody who lived in this house. Or knew Brian Koberger, for that matter. So, I think it's very possible that Brent K., you know, would have been able to commit these crimes. But I just haven't seen a connection, in my opinion, that would make him someone who was probable that committed these crimes or helped commit these crimes. PTSD and mental disorders or a mental illness could happen to anybody. You know, it's very common. So I just want to clarify that I am not saying that because Brent K had, you know, either one of these conditions that he would automatically be a violent individual because that's that that's not true. I'm not saying that just because someone has these disorders that that would make them a violent person. Basically, I'm just saying that I do believe that Brent Kopaka had the skill set to carry out these crimes. So basically, the idea of this theory is that it's very possible that these victims' lives could have been taken in retaliation for the actions of two of these victims' family members. So it's very possible that two of these victims were the targets and the other two victims were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, it's also part of this theory that Brian Koberger and Brent K worked together to commit these crimes as enforcers for traffickers in this area. So it's a very interesting theory. And as I said, we've talked about this theory before. And a lot of creators had talked about this theory before I did. So this theory has been out there for a while. But as I said, you know, there's different variations of this theory. And I just thought that Pavarotti's variation of this theory is very interesting. And in my opinion, it makes a lot of sense if this is how this happened. What do you all think? Do you guys believe that it's a possibility that these victims' lives were taken in retaliation for something that may have happened with their family members and that maybe these crimes were meant to send a message and meant to get the message out there that this is what's going to happen if you threaten the preservation of this organization. Let me know in the comments. And thanks for hanging out with me today. I really do appreciate it. And if you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you next time.